Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we have a very exciting video. This is me breaking down and reading all of the books in the Tattered and Torn series by Katherine Cowles. While I'm filming this clip, I already read all these books, but I realized I never filmed an intro, so I didn't want to just have y'all jump in on a clip of me reading or reviewing book one. So here's me introducing this video. I decided to read all the books in the Tattered and Torn series by Katherine Cowles, um, mainly because we, Brie and I, have a book that we chose for our book club, which was book four in the series. And that honestly just gave me a perfect opportunity to marathon all of the other books in the series. And so I thought I would rate and review every book in the series immediately after I finished it. So I have five clips in this video, each of which has me reviewing one of the books in the series. So it's just going to be my ending thoughts and review of these books. This is spoiler free in case you want to read this series. It's going to be me reviewing them, talking about what happened in the book, like a summary, not a spoiler part. Um, in case you want to check these books out as well and you haven't gotten to them yet and I highly recommend that you do get to them because they were so good so I cannot wait for you to watch what I thought of these books so let, let's go sorry for the lighting y'all I'm trying my best um and if you hear dogs I apologize but I have finished Tattered Stars by Katherine Cowles the first book in the Tattered and Torn series oh my goodness sorry he wants he wants this he wants this really bad so I finished this book and I really, really, really liked it. It's my first Katherine Cowles. It was great. It was amazing. It makes me really want to read the rest of her books, honestly. I'm gonna pop in for a second because I realized I didn't explain the summary of this book um, for those who have not read it yet. But this is the romance between Hayes and Everly. When Hayes was really young, his sister was abducted and taken, like kidnapped, I think for four or five days. And so Everly in here is the heroine of the story. When she was a little girl, she saw her father kidnap this girl and keep her in a shed for days. And she's like, enough is enough. He won't let her go. I have to go to the police. Gets on her horse and rides the horse all the way to the police station and reports it. Her father goes to jail for forever. She ends up saving Shiloh, bringing, reuniting her with her family. But Hayes has honestly not liked Everly since um, because she's been affiliated with the man who uh, kidnapped his sister. Um, it's years later. Everly has inherited the family property that she grew up on from her mother and she's there to build an animal sanctuary for animals, obviously. <laughs> Hayes realizes this and he's the town sheriff and he's not excited whatsoever that Everly is moving back into town um, and he makes it quite known to her. Even though his family is totally grateful and wants Everly to have the best life possible because she's the reason why their daughter is alive. And so Hayes has to realize that Everly is not her father. Everly saved her his sister, he, she, she didn't do anything, anything bad. That's the summary for you. There's also a little suspense element in there. So I'm gonna leave it at that and jump to the other Avery. <laughs> Sorry, I'm moving the camera around. The uh, sun keeps getting in my eyes. Everly and Hayes' story was really great. I loved this small town. The way that Catherine Cowles writes, I was obsessed with. I was hooked into. She really reminds me of the writing style of a Britney Cherry book, um, but I feel like Britney Cherry definitely pulls at your heartstrings more. Um, literally almost every single one of her books has made me sob. So this one adds more of a suspenseful element. And I didn't necessarily see the suspense coming. Like normally I'm able to predict the suspenseful part, like who done it, but I wasn't really in this one. Um, it was someone I was not expecting. So I thought their relationship was amazing because you really got to see them fall for each other on page. I've talked about this before, but I really don't love romances where all of a sudden a switch is flipped and characters are in love with each other. Um, like I need to see the slow progression, the love. I saw that on page and I love it. I love it. Ooh, there's a truck going. Anyway, you get to see Katniss back there, which is nice. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I really loved their relationship and Hayes' whole family was great. And I believe that's who the rest of the books are gonna be like centered around. I haven't really looked into the other books yet, except I know that the book that is not out yet, like the um, the fifth book in this, the fifth book in this series is gonna be about Shiloh. Um, so I'm really excited to uh, read about her and who 
is going to be her love interest. I'm just excited to read more of these books because I feel like I can really get sucked into Catherine Cowles' writing. And this book like shows that. Like I was obsessed with it, wanted to read it, couldn't stop reading it, wanted to listen to it all the time. Also the narrators were freaking fantastic. Annie Arndt is one of my favorite narrators ever and her paired with Zach Zachary Weber perfect. I really hope we get to see more of the animal sanctuary in the next couple books because I really wanted to read more about that and like it actually being in use and I love how um these characters kind of like grew together by building this sanctuary together which was so nice. The main thing I learned about this book is that I love Catherine Callis's writing which is amazing. Also realize the camera is shaking and it's because of this dog running on the deck and I apologize. <laughs> anyway, I've learned that I loved Catherine Cowles' writing and I am thrilled. I am so excited. And then Brie and I's book club pick is book four in the series. So it just makes me even more excited that I actually love this author's writing and it's gonna have chronic illness rep in book four. And that's all I can really say at the moment. I finished it last night, so it's not 100% fresh in my brain. And that's all I really wanna say without spoiling anything. I'm trying to keep this video as spoiler-free as possible, just so people can get the gist of these books. I'm gonna give this book four stars, I think. I really enjoyed this book. I loved the story. However, it's just not my personal favorite thing in the world, and it doesn't connect to me on a level I think book four will. So I, I, I hate to say this because I don't want to set myself with high expectations, but I think book four may be my five star read. So anyway, I'm excited to go read the rest of the books. I just finished book two in the series, which is Falling Embers. This one was a fast paced read I could not put down, definitely. I don't know if I liked it more or the same as book one. I'm going to be giving them the same rating. I'm going to be giving them four stars. I don't know which one I like more if I like them equally, honestly. This one is the romance between Hadley and Col Coulter? 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 Man, I don't know why I'm having a hard time pronouncing that. Um, but he's a single dad with two little girls and Hadley is kind of like a daredevil and she does these cool tricks on bikes and skateboards and stuff and yeah she's going through a rough time with her mother her mother's very controlling and does not want hadley to get into something dangerous um because of what her sister shiloh was when went through when she was a kid so she's very protective of hadley but she is too protective of her she does not act the same way about her other children which still like baffles me um i don't understand that with her mother like her mother was a little bit wow in this one compared to book one and i don't get why she just singled out hadley like i have no clue why she was like that just to her i don't think we got an answer for that like why was she only like that for hadley and not the other siblings things happen and there is a suspense element in, in here um someone's trying to get hadley stalk her push her buttons and you're trying to figure out who's like stalking her online and like spreading her phone number out to the world and then like sharing Hadley's address to the world and then also like doing some gross things. Someone's also trying to like get her in real life. Like it's, it's very bizarre. The suspense element in here wasn't my favorite thing ever. Like if you don't know me, I don't really prefer suspense elements in romances. I feel like in book one, it was less like high strung like this one it was more prevalent which maybe is the reason why i did not enjoy this one maybe as much as book one i looking back on it i think i do like book one more just like i feel like the suspense element was a little bit too much for me um because suspense is not my favorite thing ever as i've said i did like hadley and Calder's um, relationship in here. I thought it was really sweet and really cute. I really love her relationship with his daughters. I love their names. Sage and Birdie are so cute. Um, however, <laughs> I don't know. As someone who has worked all of her life, almost every single job I've ever had in my entire life has worked with children and like kids. I think they're 10 years old, right? 10 or, 10 or 8. Around that age range, 8 to 10 or 11. I think it's 10. 8 to 10 is their age range. The way that they spoke sometimes, I was like, eh, I don't think this is actually how a kid this age would talk, you know, just because I've experienced working with them for so long. <laughs> so Bernie and Sage were definitely wiser than their years. And so I feel like, I don't know, I feel like she could have made them a little bit older, made them like, they definitely acted like and talked like a 
13 or 14 year old, even 15 too, just because of their emotional stability and emotional capability of talking about emotion. Like I, I could go into depth. I've studied children and like childhood development and psychology. So like, I don't want to go too deep into that. So um, that took me a little bit out of the story at points just because like I've worked with kids and it wasn't 100% like accurate in my brain but again all kids are different so who knows maybe uh Catherine Cowles like knows kids who do talk like that good for her but that didn't like lower my rating at all just want to say that I just thought that took me out of the story a little bit I do wish there was a little bit more resolution at the end I feel like it was a little rushed um with everything wham bam 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 with the suspense things all being revealed I don't want to spoil it for anybody but there was like a second wave of something that I wasn't really expecting I thought we had already tied up bows and loose ends with a specific thing and we didn't and so that kind of like shocked me um which is good because it's kind of very hard to shock me because <laughs> I'm a person who thinks about anything and everything and every possibility so um I will say though like the villain of the story I was not surprised by honestly again I think about everything and anything and this person popped into my brain of being the villain of the story but i overall liked it the small town vibe the people in the town the characters themselves were really amazing to read about i really loved the aspect in here with the daredevil antics and stuff like that like that was really cool because i've never read about that before and i really liked reading about Hattie's perspective when she's in her zone for doing all those tricks and stuff it was really cool to read about so i overall really liked this one i'm so excited for the next one because the next one's gonna be about addy and i feel like i really vibe with addy like i have a lot of um similar things and maybe experiences that addy has gone through so i am really excited for her book so i can't wait to go dive into it yesterday i ended up finishing hidden waters by katherine cowles and i i love this one it's going to be my first five star of this series. This is the romance between Addie and Beckett and I just adored them. Their romance is the type of romance I want. <laughs> like the start of it, the progression of it, the end result, like their romance is my kind of romance. I love it. Addie and Beckett have to become roommates for a time while Beckett's house is being built. Addie is currently staying in one of the people from the first couple. Like they moved in together. The first couple moved in together. Sorry, I'm really bad with names. So I'm just saying the first couple. The first couple moved in together. So the guy from that couple is not staying in his house anymore. Um, and so Addie has uh, been staying in this house for a few months, maybe a year. And then Beckett, who is the brother to the guy from book one, and sister from book two. So I think each book is about someone in this freaking family. Um, anyway, he comes back into town, as you saw in the last book, and he needs somewhere to stay while his house is being built. And so him and Addie end up being roommates. But Addie, as you read in the previous books, has a lot of trauma, especially with men. Um, she was abused very badly by her father and is honestly scared of him. Even the suspense mystery part in here, I liked because I feel like for the two previous books, there were like people and things that were meant to throw you off from the actual like person committing a crime. And in this one, it was a little bit more obvious and there wasn't any tricking happening, you know? And I liked that way more. I just really loved Addie and Beckett's romance and relationship. Um, I really relate to Addie. I've been through some of the things Addie's been through. The way she is with Beckett at first to the end, just like her slow progression, her growth to trusting and loving somebody was beautiful. Oh, the beast came. Say hello, Mr. Beast. Say hello, Mr. Beast. You got a bunch of stick bars in your fur. We got to clean that out. Anyway, that's my sister's puppy. Well, he's not a puppy. He's freaking giant. Anyway, <laughs> I really, really loved this romance and just like everything about it. I did not see any fault in this book and this romance and even the mystery part in here. We also got to meet Lakin in this book, who is the heroine for the next book in the series, which was the main reason why I wanted to read this series because book four is Brie and I's book club book. I'm really interested in Lakin's character and overall, like she was so sweet to Addie. I honestly also really appreciate and just love 
Beckett himself because of the way that he treated and loved Addie. I know Beckett is a fictional character. Okay, I know. Um, but I really hope that uh, there are men out there like Beckett who are sweet and compassionate and kind and as patient as he is because there are men out there who would hear about somebody's past and somebody's, I don't know, guess scars and trauma in their life and would run for the hills. <laughs> and no, um, Beckett fully loves and supports and admires Addie and I just loved him. <laughs> There's nothing else I can really say about this book without spoiling it. I'm trying not to spoil books for this video. So this one is definitely my favorite so far. I loved it so much. Hi everyone. I have finished Shattered Sea. So the only book that I own physically because Catherine Cowles was so sweet and sent this book my way and to a few of my other chronically ill friends. And so thank you so much for sending this my way. So um, it is the what day is it? It is the 15th. And so yesterday was my live show with Brie. Brie and I's uh, Chronically Courageous live show. It was our first book club live show for this book specifically. And so you can go check out that live show that'll be linked down below if you want more thoughts on this. Because we talk about like in detail what we loved about this book um, and then what we did necessarily love about this book. Um, I really liked it. I really loved this book. I really liked it. However, I think like I talked about in the live show how I just came off of reading book three and I like, told you how much I freaking love book three. And so this just gave me for more of the same feelings and vibes as book one or book two, which I did enjoy. I really liked, but not as much as book three. <laughs> and I think I realized during that live show, I love book three the most because the suspense element isn't really a giant part of the book. I think book one, book two, and book four are like 50-50 with suspense and then the romance plot. And I more so wanted the romance. Like I I care about that more and so I want it to be more of the story. Um, and so this one wasn't necessarily my favorite book like in general um, because book three was. <laughs> I'll stop talking about book three. But I did really enjoy this. Like the romance was beautiful. I think it's the suspense part that I just didn't really care for personally in my like feelings and thoughts and um, views on romance books, you know. Um, I'll put this book down because I'm tired of holding it. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed this one. This one is about Lakin and Bowden and Bowden is going into this small town that the series takes place in Wolf Gap to get some research done for a movie that he's in. He's a celebrity. So there's the fame trope in here. Brie and I both don't really care for the fame celebrity trope, but this is the type of celebrity book that I love where the celebrity part is literally like this big of the book. So I loved that aspect in here. Um, and so he's famous. He's in Wolf Gap to research this role that he's doing. And when he's walking around town, he uh, walks into the art gallery that Lakin works at. It's kind of like the manager of. And he is enthralled by one of the photographs he sees in like the shop window. And it's of Lakin. And he doesn't know that she took the picture. Nobody knows that she took this picture, but she did. But she is also in the picture herself. And it very much depicts the feeling of loss and grief in a single photograph. And he's like, I need that picture. I will pay whatever price it is. I don't care how expensive it is. I want that photograph. I loved that meet cute moment. Brie did too. Like, it was amazing. I love that moment. Um, and then the rest kind of goes from there. This is very much more of a insta-love, fast-paced romance. I feel like they said I love you a little bit too quickly for my personal taste when it comes to romances. Um, but again, that's my personal taste. But yeah, Lakin was previously like 10 years ago in a car crash that um, killed her high school boyfriend um, who she was gonna, who she thought she'd spend the rest of her life with. And she had a bunch of friends with her like in other cars, like driving with them. And those friends, it's 10 years later and those friends are turning up dead. And so uh, they're trying to figure out who's killing her friends. And then that person may or may not be out to kill Lakin herself. Uh, during that car accident, Lakin also got injured pretty badly. Um, and she has a lot of chronic pain as a result. And that is something I really related to because I have a few chronic illnesses myself. Uh, I specifically have hypermobility joint syndrome. That's one of the ones I have that leaves my joints 
and um, muscles very achy. And so like I really related to Lakin in here. Her thoughts and feelings of having this pain all the time, just like, oh, I wanted to cry. I felt that so hard. And it just made me connect with Katherine Cowles even more because she has chronic pain herself. She, I believe, was in an accident um, that left her with some chronic pain as well. And so this is own voices for that. And so I really, really, really appreciated that and really related to that. And um, one of my favorite quotes in here is um, this one that Lakin tells Bowden because she's sitting in a chair that doesn't have a back to it, which I can't sit in bar stools or stools either. Um, and so Bowden's like, why didn't you tell me this was hurting you? Like we could have moved seats or we could have gone somewhere else. And she responds by saying, sometimes I don't want everyone around me to have to make concessions because my body can't keep up like the rest of yours. Like, I don't think people understand how guilty people like us feel when we have to tell people we can't go somewhere or can't do something, can't sit in a chair because of the way that our bodies are. It, it's exhausting and you sometimes suck it up because you don't want people to look at you or think of you a different way. You want to be as normal as possible. Like you don't want someone to look at you and think of you differently simply because you can't do something. Um, so that's my two cents on it. Um, I really related to her too in that aspect because um, I'm not able to stand for long periods of time um, and I have a walker that I have to use to um, have like a portable seat with me everywhere basically. And yeah, I just, or I, I really relate to Slaken. And like that part of the book was phenomenal, the chronic pain rep. And we go more in detail on that in our live show. It's our chronically courageous live show where we talk in depth about books that we pick that have chronic illness or disability or mental health representation. And so we love that. That was a phenomenal first book club pick. We talked about how the suspense aspect of this book wasn't necessarily our favorite. Both Brie and I, we do not necessarily prefer suspense romances. Um, and so that just wasn't really our favorite thing in here. But I really loved this romance between the two of them. It happened a little bit, again, too fast for my liking, but just Bowden was so sweet and the caretaking scenes in here were phenomenal. They both took care of each other at points. There's one scene where Lakin um, is not able to shave her legs because of her chronic pain and Bowden literally goes and shaves her legs for her. <laughs> I love scenes like that. There's an there's an equally like amazing scene in um, Everything For You by Chloe Lise um, that has like a scene like that in a shower chair and oh I, I use a shower chair if you don't know and so it just it made me feel so seen and I love that and so I really loved that scene in here. There's also two really cute pups in here. Um, Lakin has a dog named Gizmo whose uh, back legs are don't move and so he has these uh like this contraption you put on him that has wheels and so he's able to wheel himself around and then gizmo sees uh bowden's dog peaches who's way bigger than him <laughs> and just like a goofy dog um and they are obsessed with each other these two dogs are like best friends <laughs> and there's one scene that's really funny that i love in here too with the dogs one scene that really sticks out to me that i loved in this book is um uh when bowden finds out that lakin is the photographer of these photographs that he loves so much there's a specific scene i don't want to spoil anything but there's a specific scene when he realizes this and just like the way that he figures it out and just that whole scene in general was beautiful to me the grief is also a very big part in here please be cautious going in if that's not if that's something triggering for you i will mention one thing i did not see going into this um like didn't see in a trigger warning was um a trigger warning for like a shooter coming out of nowhere, a shooting. I have been a victim of a shooting before. And so that was a little drawing for me. I had to put the book down at one point because I didn't know that would happen. In the previous books in the series, like there have been guns like coming up. And, but I feel like it's, it was more gradual. Like I think in book three, the villain in that story has a gun. He's carrying a gun the whole time. This whole climactic scene is happening like but I feel like it gets gradually put into the book if that makes sense like this is also my personal trigger and so like things like this are easier for me to swallow and for me to read so like when someone's like oh I take the gun out of the safe or I pick the gun up I'm walking with like, like the gun t discussion and talk is very gradual if that makes sense I don't know if that's making sense but in here there is a scene where literally out of nowhere there is gunfire and that's triggering for me personally because I've been a victim of something like that. So 
please be aware of that. I've had to put books down before because of scenes like that and I didn't know that that was in here going in. So that will be in my trigger warning for my, it is already on my trigger warning for my Goodreads review. If you want to go check it out, there's also, I listed all the other triggers in there and for all the other books too on all my reviews on Goodreads. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I've been gabbing about this book for a while, but I really loved this. And if you want to know more of Brie and I's thoughts in general, you can go check out our live show that's linked down below. And after reading this, we were both so excited to finally get to the last book in the series. It comes out, I think in like a week or two for me. And I am so excited for Shiloh and Ramsey's book because you meet Ramsey in this book because Bowden is shadow basically shadowing him to learn about a role that he wants to perform um and I could just like see in there just like the little glimpses between Shiloh and Ramsey like the one scene between Shiloh and Ramsey in this book I was like oh my gosh it's gonna be phenomenal <laughs> and I've already uh read my friends reviews and seen the reviews I've seen nothing but five stars for this book. So I'm so excited for whenever that one comes out. And I just want to say thank you, Catherine Cowles, if you're watching this. Thank you so much for sending this book to me and all my other friends who are chronically ill. Like, bless you. You, your the representation in here is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. You did amazing. And yeah, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see what you write next with representation like this, if you choose to, um, because it was just beautiful. And I love reading stories about people like me. So yeah, thank you so much. We have another closet clip because we just do, okay? <laughs> um, I have finished the final book in the series. Oh my gosh, I finished Fractured Sky. Five out of five freaking stars. It was so good. This is the romance between Shiloh and um, Ramsey. And you know Shiloh from all the other books in the series. She's the girl that was taken in book one that we read about. Um, and this is finally her romance story with Ramsey, who is a character we meet in book four. Ramsey was wrongfully imprisoned. His father kind of cheated, not father, sorry, his stepfather cheated the police system and was able to bribe people to make it seem like his stepson Ramsey killed his mother when in actuality he didn't um and so for years he was wrongfully imprisoned and that is really weighed heavy on him having to live in prison for something you did not do when he got out he got into horse rehabilitation and so now he has a ranch where he has horses and he takes care of them and kind of rehabilitates those that have been abused in the past and so Shiloh also has kind of a damaged past as well because of everything that she's gone through with a kidnapping for the past nine years she has taken like her horse or walk in onto Ramsey's property and just sat basically on the edge of the property watching him like help these horses out and at the beginning of this book it's the first time she goes up to him to kind of talk to him and to learn from him because she just loves horses so much. She's also going through some things with her family. Her family is kind of a little bit too Con not controlling, controlling isn't the right word, but they're very overprotective because of what has happened to Shy. And so she decides enough is enough and she has uh, decided to move out and Ramsey offers a cabin on his property because he knows that she feels safe there. And so it's about them living on the same property together and she's also going to be working for him and helping him with the horses. And it was just amazing. Shiloh and Ramsey are completely soulmates. They were meant for each other. You wouldn't know also reading this that this is an age gap romance. I believe Shiloh is 27 and Ramsey is 37. Like you cannot tell at all because just their relationship and the way that they talk to each other, it's like they're almost like the same person and I love that even though they're from like completely different times in their life. They're also from different areas. Ramsey did not grow up in Wolf Gap, the small town, so he's kind of not ostracized, he kind of ostracizes himself from the people because he didn't grow up here. I also love in here how you get to see him like, like break down his walls when it comes to people. He thinks that he's not good with people. He's very grumpy and standoffish and he thinks he can only really build a good relationship with horses. But when Shiloh ends up coming onto his property, um, things happen to where he slowly lets down, lets down his walls a little more and he lets her in and her family in and they become his family. And then there are these two little boys. I don't want to spoil it if you haven't read the book, but 
these little boys oh my gosh I loved that part of the book I was not expecting that part of the book I haven't heard anybody talk about that but I adored that part because those boys have gone through a lot of what both Shiloh and Ramsey have gone through oh, I'm gonna cry and so I just love how they took them in with like open arms their romance was epic I love how slow it was Ramsey was so patient with Shiloh there's also one scene in the book that I love that I know that other people other people love as well where Shiloh is basically having a panic attack and Ramsey goes up to her and touches her to kind of like calm her down and she's like oh my gosh you're touching me he's like do you not want me to touch you and she's like no, no no touch me like it doesn't hurt when you touch me normally when people touch me it hurts you don't hurt I also want to mention I was not seeing the suspense element who done it I was not seeing it at all I was not seeing that at all. And so I think Catherine Gallus did an amazing job with that. Cause remember during this whole video, I've said like, oh, I don't really like suspense cause I can see it coming and blah, blah, blah. This one I didn't, I did not. And so congratulations, Catherine Gallus. <laughs> I love that. I also love how strong Shiloh became throughout this whole entire book. She is so stinging strong. And I love how she started to stand up for herself. Like you could see at the beginning of this book, like she doesn't even want to leave her family's property. She doesn't want to walk through town because she gets whispered at. She gets stares from other people and she just wants to run and leave. And by the end of the book, she is standing up to people who have wronged her. And man, that girl gained some confidence and I love that for her. I don't know which one's my favorite, if it's this one or book three. I don't think I can choose. I really don't want to rank them for y'all. I know I've done that with other series videos, but I don't think I'm going to rank my, my thoughts on this series. I think also my opinion changes on some of them like every day. <laughs> so i don't know i don't know what i would rank this um but it is five stars and only two books in this series so far are five stars so take with that what you will i just love this i literally started this what at like one o'clock and it is i finished it at like five because <laughs> all i did for hours was listen to this audio that's all i wanted to do it completely sucked me in Catherine Cowles' writing was beautiful in here. I bet there was like amazing lines. I wish I had a physical copy on me so I could annotate it because that's what I did with Shattered Sea. But with audio, it's just so hard for me to remember memorable quotes because I don't have the physical copy on me. I'm gonna have to get a physical copy soon. If I don't get one now, I'm gonna get one for Book Bonanza so she can sign uh, the, the four that I do not have signed by her already. But this book was just phenomenal and I feel like it was so much better also because I had read all the other books in the series. So if you're thinking about reading these books and you're just wanting to jump to book five, like you can, I'm not the reading police obviously, but like I think I got a way better reading experience out of it because I knew about Shiloh beforehand, I knew about Ramsey beforehand, and you got to see them in the previous books and how they've grown throughout this one. And it was amazing. Let me know down below if you have read this series or if you plan to. And if you want to see other videos like this from me, I'd love to know like series breakdown videos. Um, but yeah, thank you all so, so much for watching. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me um, a purple heart emoji. But yeah, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day.